In this screencast, we are going to compare the perfectly competitive firm graph to the monopoly graph. Um, this one's really important. This is something that can be asked on FRQs, and so you want to be able to recognize how you could pull a PC graph out of a monopoly, and then also be able to compare the different efficiencies that go along with it. So what we have over here is we have this monopoly graph. Um, you can see here your demand equals average revenue equals price. You have your marginal revenue curve that's lower than that because for an, a monopoly, in order to increase its output, it has to lower the price for not only that additional unit, but for all previous units. And so that's why the marginal revenue is less than the demand for the monopoly graph. Over here you have the perfectly competitive and we're starting with this monopoly graph where you have the demand and the marginal revenue but remember that um, for a perfectly competitive the marginal cost curve where it intersects the AVC is the same thing as the supply curve. So when we're looking at the perfectly competitive we can see here that this is supply and this is demand and so when we since they're price takers they take the price from the industry, they'll take it with that intersection there of marginal, marginal cost and demand or supply and demand in order to give you your Mr. Dart. So that's the first thing that we did here was we made this into that perfectly elastic Mr. Dart. And with that then, we'll start looking at our different formulas and seeing how things apply. The first one here is our profit maximizing output. This is where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. You can see here for the perfectly competitive, it's that where that intersection of the marginal cost curve and the um, marginal revenue curve intersect. You can also see it here for the monopoly where you have your marginal revenue and your marginal cost. This is really important to recognize in that a purely competitive firm will always produce a larger output than the monopoly. Over here, you're going to see where that um, profit maximizing output is also. And again, we're looking here at where MR equals MC. The next one to look at here is allocative efficiency. And this is producing that right mix of goods. Our formula for that one is price equals marginal cost. So when we look over here at the perfectly competitive graph, again, a perfectly competitive firm is always allocatively efficient. And so it is going to be at that profit maximizing output. Unfortunately, we can't stay, say the same for the monopoly graph. And so over here, where you look at where MR equals MC, that is not the same as where we have it for price equals marginal cost. And so a monopoly is never allocatively efficient. Then you have the productively efficient, um, and that's producing goods as cheaply as possible. Um, it's not going to be here. We don't have an ATC curve on our purely competitive graph, but if you try to locate it there on your monopoly graph, you will see that productive efficiency in this case here is um, over at this output. Your ATC could be way over here, so it doesn't have to be at a quantity that is less than where they're producing it. The point is, is that a monopoly is never productively efficient. And then when we're looking at some things like with consumer surplus, consumer surplus, if you're looking here now at the, um, this graph with the perfectly competitive firm, it is going to be this whole big blue area. If we're talking about the monopoly, we're talking about, again, for consumer surplus, below the demand curve and above the monopoly price. It's obviously much smaller than what you would have here. And so that's one of the major takeaways that we have is that the um, consumer surplus is far less because you have a different price um, for it. When we look here at economic profit, the formula for economic profit is price minus ATC times quantity. If you look over here at this monopoly graph, we can see that their um, price minus ATC times quantity is going to be this blue box here. Now with regard to the dead weight loss, there is no dead weight loss when you're in a perfectly competitive firm because that is something where you have the right amount of consumer and producer surplus. However, when a monopoly, uh, a perfectly competitive would get turned into a monopoly, what you would see here then is this loss of consumer and producer surplus. I think it's a little easier to see over on this one here because you were at an output here for the quantity of the perfectly competitive, but then because it got um, changed into the monopoly, you have this 
difference in the quantity, which takes away from both the consumer and the producer surplus that you have. And so when you're looking at these differences, you can see how consumer surplus is much smaller for the perfectly um, for the monopoly than it is for the perfectly competitive and you have a dead weight loss when you have a monopoly that you wouldn't have for the perfectly competitive firm. The one last thing to look at here is that as we said before that the perfectly competitive firm will also produce a larger quantity than the monopoly the perfectly competitive firm will also charge a lower price than the monopoly we obviously see that when we were just talking about the consumer surplus but graphically you can also see that that intersection of MR equals MC for the perfectly competitive and that is also your price is much lower than where you have MR equals MC up to the demand curve in order to figure out your price for the monopoly.